Hey guys, welcome back to another Coding Flamingo video. In this video, we're going to go over how to do certificate-based authentication the right way. So doing it with validating the CA instead of hard coding the certificates in API management here and adding the certificates, you could do it all with CA certificates, even though it's very hidden in the Azure uh, documentation. I'll link to this documentation. I'll have all the code down below with a commit in GitHub. So you can literally just grab the code and kind of go from there. We're going to be using EZCA, which is what I use for work. And this is because many customers have been asking me lately about this. So I was like, I might as well just do a video that I can just send to them. This is kind of the workflow, how we're going to do it. And then after that, like I'll kind of like show the code and everything. So how does it work? So first thing you have to do is register your new customer into EZCA and also into your database and everything. So the customer will come in, they'll authenticate however you authenticate into your application. And in there, they're going to register their uh, new application. You can make it that you give them the guides on how to create a CSR. We also have the docs down here. This is what I use to create it. You can kind of like pre-make the INF for them for them to create the CSR. And the important part is the private key never leaves their computer. Once that happens, they submit the CSR. You validate whatever authentication you're doing at that point. In this code, we don't have that authentication because it's going to depend on each one of you. And then you register that domain with EZCA and request the, the first certificate. You return to them the first certificate that you created. Then after that, they can consume your managed APIs with that certificate. When it's about to expire, they automatically rotate that with EZCA. And EZCA has a NuGet package. It also has uh, an executable they can run and kind of schedule a task that will automatically rotate the certificate. So it really makes it really easy. Either like two lines of C-sharp code or one line of PowerShell and a scheduled task for your customers to automatically rotate the certificate. You don't have to do anything because we actually pass a subject name to the application. So then you know what e user is authenticating. And Azure takes care of all the actual checking that the certificate comes from the CA that you want and so on. Now let's get into it. First thing we have to do is we upload the certificate, the CA certificate. So like the root certificate and the intermediate certificate. And you do this by like going here, going to your certificate authorities, view details, you download the certificate, and then you go and you upload it. So in here, as you can see, I already did that. And then in here, I just grabbed their Echo API to test it and I grab this one and I edited the policy and I'm gonna have this value as well in the GitHub commit so you can see it. But basically what we're doing here, let me just open it up. So basically what we're telling Azure to do is validate the client certificate, validate the revocation so that the certificate has not been rev revoked, validate that it came from a CA that we trust that is in the store that we just added, validate that it, it's not expired and that it has been created after today's date and do not ignore the errors. After that, grab whatever the subject name is and pass as a header to our application. So then they already do all the certificate validation. They offload that from your code. And we also have some code samples with certificate validation if you're not using API management. So feel free to just ask me and even in the comments and I could just put it out there and that's it. And we override it so people don't just add one. Once we have created the rule, now we have to write the code to validate the CSR and send the CSR to EZCA. So it's pretty straightforward. And here is register a new user and here you would have your authentication or anything. We don't have authentication here just because it's just a sample. We're assuming that you're doing it. And I link to the documentation here. Basically, we check this should be a 400, not a 401. And then we register the, the new user. And to do that, we first validate the CSR. And you can go into all the coding detail. I'm not going to do it. So this video doesn't become super long. Uh, if, it's val if it's not valid, you return false. Then you get the CAs from EZCA. And in here, we're using the Nugget package from EZCA. So in here, we're using the Nugget package from EZCA that basically makes it a line of code to just do this. So. We get the available CAs. If you're just having one CA, you can just kind of hard code this, you know, like get it once and then hard code the values of it. But in here, we're basically saying, get the first one with the value, the name that we want. Uh, so then it will get the, the CA and then it'll request the certificate. So first we register the domain. So in here's the domain in this case would be your username. So for this scenario, we're using one that is called test.coding 
which is, you know, the coding Flamingo, which is easy to type it all out. Then we request a certificate and we return the certificate to the user. So pretty straightforward, as you saw, like 40 lines of code, plus the validation of the CSR that we decompose the CSR, we check the subject name matches the subject name and so on. And then we send that. So now let's run it. And we're going to go to Swagger here. And we have the CSR that I already created. I can show here how I created it. So I basically did the cert request with the INF file and then created the CSR. And I'm just going to click execute. And now we got the response, we got a 200 and we got the certificate. So then the user would install the certificate in their local store or whatever. And then they would be able to, um, they would be able to start authenticating into your application. So the last thing we have to do in the application is kind of create an API that can grab that uh, header. So in here, we're doing the X client cert subject. And if it's empty or null, we find that. And in this case, also the application doesn't have like a database to make sure that the user exists or anything that's up to you to do. So in here, we just re respond with hello header name. In this case, I'm just gonna use Postman. So we can set the header as if like API manager is sending it. And as you can see here, it says hello testing.coding. So that's how you use API management. Hope this makes your life way easier because certainly the Microsoft documentation still make our life easier. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.